Hello, my name is Amy Denise and welcome to the first YouTube video that I'm actually going to upload to uh, YouTube. Probably going to delete it uh, because nobody knows about my channel because I haven't told anybody really. But uh, for whatever reason, I'm just going to do this one and upload it. And the really the only way anyone is going to find it is if they type in heal my brain from addiction so possibly no one's even gonna find it because nobody knows about my channel but today is December 1st of 2021 and I'm just gonna put together um, or I actually put together some tidbits on how I healed my brain um, Today, actually, a photo popped up of me and my oldest child. I have three boys, and a photo popped off, popped up of me on one of my social medias of literally seven years ago, where I was, and just, oh my God, <laughs> oh, kind of burst into tears, <laughs> but um, where I was seven years ago, <laughs> totally different than where I am today. And if someone told me that, you know, seven years ago that it, like my brain wouldn't be addicted and <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna cry, that I wouldn't be like needing or seeking alcohol. By the way, I was addicted to alcohol for, let me see, I'm 45 born in 76 so from pretty much 21 on but I mean I had dips I wasn't a severe alcoholic until I was in my I would say my 30s is when it really hit but by the time I was about 26 I was having to talk myself into not having a martini until five o'clock so you know and I had definitely had plenty of blackouts and stuff early on. But anyways, um, let me see. I did, I did take some notes. So let me just look. Um, I remember back, so I saw this picture pop up and I just want to tell you this. Um, I remember my sadness, my lack of hope, um, the fear, the damage that I was doing to my loved ones. And at that point, the that picture, I had only had one arrest, only one. And that one was actually wiped off of my record. So that one's not even on my record at this point. So anyways, and I know like sitting here today, I probably don't look like a person who's been arrested, sat in jail. Anyways, I'll tell you all about all that later. But um, uh, I I certainly didn't at that point have my medical diagnoses. I know I was dealing with a lot of pain, so I drank for a number of different reasons. Yeah, I had a lot of pain, but anxiety I would have to tell you was the up there. That was why I drank, right? And I had trained my brain to go to alcohol for the relief from that. Now, I 100% disagree with the hitting rock bottom theory. And that's all it is. Because I hit rock bottom a number of times. And probably, I can't tell you everything in this one little video or it's going to be 20 hours. But I hit rock bottom many times. And not one of those times did I did I get the help I needed and recover. No. When I finally got help was when I saw that there was hope. So, but I'll go into that later. Um, my brain's only answer um, to the anxiety was what I had trained it to go to, which was the alcohol. And that was a long process. You know, I trained it over time to go to that. Um, another thing I 100% disagree with was that we, is that we are powerless over our addiction. Now, when I first started going to AA, that was one of the things I had to say is that 
I am powerless over my addiction. Um, now, I question this from the beginning. It, it always kind of felt wrong to me to say this. Um, and over time, I would hear people contradict this, but I didn't really put two and two together. Um, I would hear powerful psychologists, leaders, coaches, etc., saying that, you know, take your power back. But I didn't kind of put the two and two together. And now I'm going to put links in the description below. One really powerful one. And let me see the one specifically I'm really oh uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza he's one specifically I listen to a lot but there's tons of them out there where it says take your power back anyways but they fly in the face of this theory that you're powerless over your addiction and if I had stuck with that I wouldn't have healed so there's a reason I healed my brain and in going to a lot of those meetings there are what are called you know dry drunks where they may have 10 years of sobriety, but they still crave it. Their brain's not healed. They still have done a lot of, a lot of the steps, etc. but they still have those cravings. They still have all of that. And it's because they believe, I think, it, I think it's because they believe they're powerless. I don't. Now, I will also say that everyone has their own truths. My truth, is that I'm not powerless. They may have a different truth. So understand that I'm not saying that my way is right and their way is wrong or vice versa. My way worked for me. Their, may, their way may work for them. I'm just saying that I have my way and I healed my brain. So this is my truth. I also would like to say that anything I say in this video, I am not a doctor, a medical professional, none of that. I, however, <laughs> have had tons of medical professionals work on me. I'm uh, doctors, I mean, you name it. I have been seen by lots of people because I've been an inpatient, outpatient, ICUs. I was uh, put in a, because I was wanting to die many times, but one time I was actually put in a place because I wanted to die that badly. So I'm just saying, I've been seen by a lot of people. I have diagnoses for both psychological and pain, etc. So anyways, I need to get moving on this thing or we're never going to get going. Okay. So um, back to, I want to make sure I follow this. Okay. So another thing um, I didn't believe at first when I started going to AA, I did not know that addiction was a disease. And I think a lot of people, they really don't know that. And when I was first told this concept, I was like, really? Mm. But it started to sink in after a while and I started to research and I, I am so thankful for YouTube. I'm telling you because I did so much research and I am so thankful f actually for the people on YouTube that are willing to give information, put themselves out there and share, right? Cause that's really how I was able to heal just the researching information. Um, there is a huge difference between physical addiction and mental addiction. Now, <laughs> I detox many times and you can detox from alcohol, but that doesn't mean your mental addiction is gone, right? A mental addiction is the disease portion of it. The physical addiction you can detox from. The mental addiction is why they call it a disease, right? That's why people can be addicted to gambling, hoarding, sex, right? All of these other things. That's the disease process. That's the mental addiction. The physical addiction is when you can be addicted to a physical drug, like taking something. You can detox. That does nothing for the mental portion of it, right? You have to kill off those um, neural pathways that c were created over time, right? So the longer you took and built those up, me, which was a long time, the longer it takes to kill those off. So um, uh, let me see. Now, 
Nora Volkow. She is, and I, what, I keep looking at notes because I want to make sure I don't leave it out. Nora Volkow, she is a great person. I'm going to leave a link below um, on a panel, uh, but I'll leave that link below. So definitely check that out. She's interviewed along with an, another, um, another, uh, other scientists, etc. So, um, but when I hear people say there's a lot of bigotry towards addicts and when I hear people say that you, you should stop providing Narcan <laughs> to um, save the lives of overdosing individuals because in their estimation a person made a choice to take the drug. What I want to point out is that society provides type 2 diabetics with insulin and uh, they make the choice to consume the food that keeps them in that diabetic state, right? Should society, should society stop providing insulin to type 2 diabetics for the same reason? Well, of course not. That would be crazy. Um, you can't make rules for one part of society and not apply them to the other. That's bigotry. I absolutely think that we should provide Narcan and insulin. You know, that's medicine. We should provide that. So um, I, I don't like the bigotry that's applied to addicts because people don't understand that it is a disease process. Um, another, um, another thing I want to point out is that my healing absolutely came um, when I took my mindset out of victim mentality, right? So there was a long period of time when I started learning about narcissists, right? Because in my mind, so uh, let's go back. So my childhood, I have uh, something called um, CPTSD. It's complex post-traumatic stress disorder. It comes from my childhood. I'll go into that probably in a later video. But um, that on top of dealing with n a lot of narcissistic behavior, with people around me, correct? So I went through a number of years of learning about narcissistic behavior, trying to pinpoint who they were, what their actions were. I could tell you probably anything you want to know about narcissists, right? So that's great and all, but what did that do? I mean, it definitely helped me out a lot to figure out how to you know, control myself in those environments, etc. But I also had to step over that mountain and say, okay, well, you can't always be the victim. Because guess what? The person with those behaviors was also a victim because the majority of narcissists or people acting out those behaviors was a victim too. That's why they act that way right? So I really started to heal when uh, no matter how much of a victim I was or was not, I chose to take my mind out of victim mentality and take my power back, right? Just like uh, in, um, in AA when they said, you don't have power over your disease. Yes, I do. I have the power. I absolutely have the power. Now, I may be victimized by people who are treating me this way, but I have the power, right? I have the power over how I react, how I control my behavior. I don't have to let them affect me emotionally. They can act however they want to act, but I control my emotions, right? That's me. So I no longer care, uh, cared who wronged me. Um, how badly or for how long. Uh, that was my choice, right? Um, and I'll talk about forgiveness a little bit later because that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> but um, um, I knew I was never going to move forward in that energy. Now, there's a wonderful um, lady. I'm going to leave a link. I learned so much from her on narcissists and she's great to learn about. And she basically tells you it's your choice to forgive or not. I chose forgiveness because it was something that I had to do for me, right? Not for them, for me. So, but whole nother video. Um, 
So, and I may look fine now, just want to point that out, but <laughs> I sobered up hardcore at least 200 times. Um, the pits of despair, oh my gosh, I've told I was near death uh, by multiple doctors. And so it's been pretty scary. Matted up, I mean, you don't even want to know what I've looked like. Um, I've had grand mauls from detox uh, that could, should have killed me. Um, they, they landed me in the ICU. Um, I spent so many sick days and nights in bed, on the floor, hiding out um, so that no one could find me that I lost count. Um, throwing up blood was lots of fun. Yeah, that tore my throat, yeah. Um, I lost my children and fought for years to get them back. I'm still fighting to get one back. Multiple arrests plenty of days in jail, uh, watching and helping others, um, hardcore detox in jail, um, from heroin and meth. I learned lots of things I didn't want to learn, <laughs> you know, um, losing my license for long periods of time, damaging vehicles, um, negatively impacting the people I love the most and having to live with that. Um, every day, uh, living out of my vehicle, <laughs> you know, I didn't have the money to support myself and I couldn't work because all I could think about was making sure that I had alcohol to drink. That's how dependent I was on it. Um, I trained my brain uh, starting around 20, um, that alcohol alleviated anxiety. You know, I had a, I just had a serious anxiety problem. Right? I mean, it was absolutely massive. Um, let me see. I'm not going to go into all of this other stuff. Let me skip ahead because this is taking way too long. I'm already 17 minutes in. Um, let me see. I'm going to tell you what my diagnoses are. Um, so I am considered dual diagnosis, comorbid PTSD. I'll go into that in a later video. Um, the, Specifics are complex PTSD, acute PTSD, OCD, um, depression, generalized anxiety disorder, and alcohol use disorder. Okay, so I can go into all that stuff later. Probably not going to mean a whole lot to you. Um, what did not help me? Talking about my past traumas. Everyone has a different way of dealing with their stuff. It didn't help me. Um, my OCD caused rumination and I have a dis dissociation issue. So there's different types of dissociation, um, three different types actually. There's depersonalization, derealization disorder, there's, uh, which is DDD, and then there's uh, dissociative identity disorder, which is DID. People used to know that as um, multiple personality disorder. I do not have that, I have the DDD. Um, not so much anymore. I can talk about it now, but back then I couldn't. Um, and then there's disassociative amnesia. So there's three different types of dis, um, dissociation. But anyway, so I used to have a really hard time talking about it. I could more write about it. It's different now, but so for some people, talk therapy doesn't always work. Just wanted to point that out. So you don't always have to, um, talk about it. And a good person for that, I should also leave a link, I'll ho hopefully you remember, child, crappy childhood fairy, um, fairy. She's a good one who talks about that. She's another YouTuber. She's a great, great therapist. Um, but she talks about um, not having to talk about it, right? So, okay, so now I'm going to get into what helped me. Oh my god, 19 minutes in and I'm just not talking. Oh my gosh. Okay, so when I finally um, t started to heal, when I figured it out, like what would freaking heal my brain? Um, here it is, 19 minutes in, maybe I'll even mark this in the notes below. Ketones, holy crap. Like I figured this out like by accident. Um, by trial and error and a horrible luck of my um, oldest son developing seizures like myself. Now I developed seizures like later in life. It was probably, um, it happened because I had seized so many times from alcohol withdrawals that I just 
developed seizures. I don't know if that's what happened, but I developed seizures. Um, I didn't bother looking into diets for myself, but when he developed seizures, um, I went all out researching and came across um, this seizure diet, which um, was called, which actually was called the keto diet. Uh, from a doctor named Wilder of the Mayo Clinic in 1921. That's when the keto diet was initially created. And it was created for, um, actually used, I believe it was used with um, seizures. Um, and then it was later, uh, I think it was in 1925, a guy named uh, Peterman, he noted cognitive improvements in patients on um, this diet. Um, uh, the diet, uh, let me see. Yeah, he just noticed all these cognitive improvements in addition to it stopping seizures. So they were really impressed with it. Now, it got out of favor when drugs were introduced, started being introduced in 1938. So it's kind of fell by the wayside, but the keto diet goes way back. So anyways, how I figured out that it worked for me in um in not wanting alcohol is i literally went on it for my seizures and then i noticed all my cravings went away my here's what it did for me um it stopped my cravings it reduced my anxiety it improved uh improved mood and increased my energy like I just had all, I literally just suddenly had all this energy. Um, it reduced like my swelling and inflammation. I had horrible inflammation issues and pain and stuff. Uh, it, it definitely alleviated my pain. Um, I have a lot of physical medical issues with my body, uh, which was another reason why I drank was to alleviate my pain. Um, it reduced my headaches. I had migraines. Um, it uh, improved my sleep. I had better concentration. My brain was like on fire. Uh, obviously stopped my seizures. I was just like, holy hell. And then every time, so I did that for a while and then I would go off of it and I would get my cravings back. And I'd be like, what's going on here? And then I'd be like, oh my God, it was the diet. Then I'd go back on it. All my cravings would go away. And then it really started to dawn on me. It's this diet it's and then so i really started researching the ketones and over time i was it dawned on me that and after all the research it dawned on me that this the ketones on my brain are what's keeping me from craving the alcohol literally it's that simple now i'm gonna have to do that whole thing in a separate video because telling you how to do this diet, like that's a million videos in itself. So trick number one though, I will tell you is coconut oil, cold pressed organic, period. You don't have to do anything, buy anything special, nothing expensive, off the shelf, but cold pressed organic. That's what I would say. Um, two tablespoons a day because it will help your body produce the ketones, okay? What you do need to do is, if you can get your carbohydrates down, okay, 10 to 15 is what the diet technically calls to, 10 to 15 carbohydrates, and that's literally nothing. You're gonna have a tough time doing that up front. What I would say is, for two weeks, reduce them take two weeks to start reducing, 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 and increasing the coconut oil, right? So keep on increasing the coconut oil, and I'll tell you more tricks and additional videos, but start with the coconut oil, start reducing the carbs. Um, and then I'll tell you about the protein, I'll go into all of that later. Okay, trick number two, inulin, okay? So alcoholics have, alco sorry, I'm not, I'm not alone here. So you might hear people knocking on the door. Um, it, I'm videotaping. <laughs> um, alcoholics have, and, and this video is honestly for addicts period, 
but um, so uh, alcoholics specifically have ruined their gut. Um, other addicts as well, it just depends on what time of, type of addict you were, but um, inulin and really any type of addict hasn't paid attention to their gut. So this is just across the board, just do this, inulin. Um, you can, what I would suggest is buying it in bulk. It's a white powder with a slightly sweet flavor to it. It's super simple. You can mix it up in drinks. You can use it in baking. It's super simple. It's a prebiotic. It helps correct um, leaky gut. Um, it improves uh, insulin resistance. It stimulates the immune system by e increasing uh, good gut bacteria, okay? Um, and I'm gonna put a link below that um, that, tell, that tells you about it. So look for that below. Next trick, vitamin C complex. Every addict has a vitamin C issue, hands down. I don't care what type of addict you are, you have a vitamin C issue. And mind you, <laughs> I'm not a health professional, so that's my modest opinion. Okay, so vitamin C is not isolated ascorbic acid, like everything on the internet says. It is not, okay? <laughs> vitamin C is, and I'm going to read this so that I get it correct. So do my, my modest opinion is to not buy vitamin C that is called ascorbic acid because what you are buying is the encapsulation surrounding what's supposed to be, you're not buying anything inside, right? You're buying the encapsulation. You're missing everything inside. Why would you do that? So everything inside is what I'm going to tell you. Okay, inside is ascorbogen bioflavonoid complexes, which have multiple role, roles in overall function. Two, tyrannase, uh, WBC trace men active, I don't know what they're, okay. Three, P factors, rutin, K factors, J factors. These do vessel strength, collagen, clotting mechanism, and O2 carrying, okay. So, ascorbic acid is the antioxidant in place as packaging to protect the complex. It carries these things, right? So why would you just want the packaging without what's supposed to be in it, right? So what I do is I just use lemons. Now, there's a reason why I used to be a big orange person and all of that, okay. As an alcoholic and someone who tries to stay on, or previous alcoholic, I'm not anymore, but, and someone who tries to stay on keto. Okay, I damaged my liver. I don't do fructose, period. Fructose is processed by the liver, period, right? So now I might have blueberries here and there, or strawberries or something like that, but I, for the most part, stay away from fructose because I am very easy on my liver, period. So I don't do fructose. So oranges, high in fructose. I just, I stay away from anything that's super high in fructose, period, as an alcoholic. Now, if your addiction was like meth or, um, or opiates or something like that, you're, um, you're in a different setting. Alcoholics, sorry, that's my cat, <laughs> that's Darwin. <laughs> Hello, Darwin. <laughs> sorry, I was up there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, he likes to he likes to sit with me. Um, as an alcoholic, uh, I personally would stay away from fructose because your liver has had enough to deal with. Okay, but um, oh, what was the other one? Oh, but um, if you want other things, if you're not an alcoholic, things like pineapple, oranges, etc., and there are plenty of green leafy vegetables that are also high in um, 
high in vitamin C as well. And I'm going to leave a link below by Dr. Sten Ekberg, and he goes through the explanation of vitamin C, right? And he explains the whole complex much better than I ever could. Oh, so he'll explain all of that. And um, yeah, so vitamin C, let me make sure I told you all of that. Um, oh, another thing I was going to tell you is that, um, so we as humans, there are some species that make this vitamin. We as humans do not make this vitamin. You have to take it in. It's essential, right? So um, addicts are depleted of this. Um, so it makes recovery very difficult if you don't have this because your immune system is very low. So I'm just telling you, when I started taking vitamin C, I just, I lit up, lit up. Okay. Vitamin C, inulin, uh, coconut oil for ketones. Okay. Next thing. Here's a big one. Shame. Oh, the shame. Oh, the shame of it all. You got to let it go. Okay. So people can say that, but like, don't feel shame. What the freak am I going to do? Like, how? How? Okay. So. Here's what you do, okay? Here's what you do. So, do you have a picture of yourself as a baby? Go find it. If you don't, okay? Find a picture on the internet that you can see yourself as a baby. Like, that's you as a baby. Something that looks like you or that you can see yourself as. But you have to be able to imagine that that's you as a baby. Either print it out, whatever. You need to have a visual, that picture in your mind's eye. Stare at that thing for so long that it is ingrained in your brain, right? Once it's in your brain, it's in your brain. That's all you need, okay? Here's what you're going to do. After you memorize this, what you're going to do is you're going to get in a comfortable position, spine straight, super comfortable to where nothing's going to bug you, um, alone, no one around you. You take 10, first of all, close your mouth. You're going to be breathing through your nose, period. Take 10 deep breaths with eyes closed, breathe into your belly so that it expands. You're going to focus on the image as you're doing this. Well, for, well, first, I'm sorry, not while you're breathing. You do the 10 deep breaths. After you do the deep breaths, you're going to focus on the image. Bring that image into your mind. See that image, right? When you have that image in your mind, you're going to send that image. You're going to send, that's you, right? So you're going to see that baby as you, and you're going to send love, forgiveness, peace, health, serenity for at least three minutes you're focusing on that baby and you're sending all this good stuff three minutes then when it's done you're done okay that happens when you start feeling shame okay when you start feeling that horrible shame you stop and you go do this period Okay. Now, when you don't have the time to separate your stuff and you're feeling the shame, say you're really busy at work and you do not have the time to do this, but you are, something hit you and you're, you're feeling it and you don't have the time to separate yourself. You've got 60 seconds max. Okay. In shorter periods of time, when the shame comes up, um, what I would say, uh, to do is you take your hands and you put them over your heart and you say, I honor myself, I respect myself, I am proud of myself, I have regard for myself, I have self-worth, and I love myself. It doesn't matter what the truth of the matter is at this point, right? You are projecting your future truth. 
and that is enough for now if that happens to be all you have at this point right that's it okay next on to the next subject gratitude rock um and this is a wonderful thing this uh this came up uh from the secret the movie the secret oh, it was a fabulous idea um you know i do gratitude um um meditations in the morning but when i heard about this gratitude rock, like, oh my gosh that's such a great idea um i carry one in my wallet it's a teeny tiny little rock any rock it doesn't matter pick it up off the ground um and keep it close by um but what it is is it's basically it's a little rock that reminds you to be grateful and when you hold it in your hand you keep it close by in your pocket in your wallet wherever it doesn't matter but when you hold it in your hand and you rub it you think of things you're grateful for so what happens is if you start getting aggravated you feel that you know either anger or frustration or someone is being narcissistic with you or whatever whatever is happening you pick the rock up and say everything horrible is going on around you the sun is shining I have a vehicle I had enough gas to get to work as simple as you can go right my mom called me yesterday you know my sister's getting out of the hospital in two days you know as simple as you can get it right because there's always something to be grateful for always and the gratitude rock is extremely helpful when you just need something to calm you down to kind of change your mood to get you out of that really frustrated point when people around you are either being really crappy or your mood is really bad okay so the secret if you want to go watch that movie it's a great movie okay on to the next subject electrolytes oh my gosh okay my electrolytes were off the charts crazy as an alcoholic i'm guessing like that's across the board with addicts um when they're off you have seizures cramping fatigue nausea vomiting headaches confusion diarrhea uh or constipation um you can have irregular fast heart rates um num numbness tingling okay so the different and these are some are extracellular and some are intracellular right the ones that tend to get really off are sodium magnesium and potassium those are the ones that like tend to give you those cramps in your legs and make you really tired and and yeah not feel so hot right so um but the totals are let me see potassium magnesium sodium uh chloride and calcium so i think those are all of them anyways i'm gonna leave a link below so you can watch a video on it but what i would say is there are multiple magnesium supplements i'm gonna do a video on electrolytes later but what i would say is <laughs> take magnesium <laughs> that's what i would say magnesium potassium is usually not so bad but and also be careful with reducing your salt especially if you are a big water drinker people think they can get away with drinking tons of water and then reducing their salt well you're going to be a very tired person just warning you okay okay so next one on the list is um oh, this one's wonderful so i was doing a number of these things but until recently, I hadn't put them all together until Master Sri Akashana, uh, I found his channel. I was like, oh my gosh, here's them all together. Okay, so there's something called Siddho Hum Kriya. And it's, it's just this wonderful five minute um, meditation, I guess, but it's putting together these five different um, things that you can do every day that I was doing separately or missing some of them and not doing them, but um, it's just wonderful. And I'm gonna leave a link to his channel so you can go check check that out as well. But it's basically 
manifesting and just setting yourself up right for the day. It's amazing. You do it in the morning, but um, there's five different components to it. It is um, surrender, connection, uh, prayer, receive gratitude. Now, if you're an atheist agnostic, instead of prayer, if you're not comfortable with that word, just put thoughts, wishes, vibes, whichever word you're comfortable with. Doesn't really matter. Um, then after you do the gratitude, detach from any outcome, uh, letting go. Um, the prayer, and you can write this down, well, without kind of doing this, so actually, let me walk you through it. So the surrender is you are surrendering to the universe. It goes really quick. You're surrendering to the universe, right? So you take in deep breaths and you just sit there and you surrender, right? And then connection is connection, right? And I'm going to send you a link. So I want you to go check out the actual link. This is connection. And then prayer, I'm gonna walk you through the prayer. So prayer is whatever you want to pray, basically. But um, Master Sri Akarshana's prayer is um, healing to those in pain, positivity to those suffering from negativity, strength and courage to those who are weak, abundance of health to those who are sick, uh, happiness to those struggling with hate, anger or frustration, um, abundance of wealth to those struggling with poverty or luck. So that's his prayer. I wrote it down for you guys if you want to write that down. Okay, so then, so that's prayer or thoughts, wishes, vibes. So whichever one you're comfortable with. Um, then there is receive, right? So we often forget to receive, right? Don't you want to receive from the universe? Right. So that's the fourth part of it. So um, you sit there and posture and receive. And then the last part of it is gratitude. And that is in a um, thankful posture. And his thankful, um, his gratitude is thank you to the universe. Thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for positivity. Thank you for connection. Thank you for everything. You come up with your own and definitely go check out his channel. But I thought this was just absolutely wonderful it, because it kind of put together a bunch of different ones that I was doing and one small little thing that just made it really amazing for me. So, um, Okay, so on to the next one. Next one is naltrexone slash Vivitrol. Okay, naltrexone is a pill, Vivitrol is a shot. Okay, so this is so powerful. Okay, so it was initially done for, um, was it alcoholics? Yeah, it started out for alcoholics. And then with Vivitrol, that was given to opioid users. So now, it is an opioid antagonist. Naltrexone, I believe, started out um, with like the Sinclair method where they would give alcoholics, uh, like an hour before they would have a drink, they would give them this drug and it would slowly train, it would slowly train them to not want the alcohol anymore because basically it stops any euphoria from the alcohol, right? So now, so it's being used across the board for opiates and alcohol, and it's been being used for food addiction for a long time. They use it in combination with eupropion. Now it's been tested for meth addiction. Um, so naltrexone with the bupropion um, addition also for meth. So now naltrexone is being used across the board as well. Um, for food and for meth, it's been used in combination with bupropion. So I've taken naltrexone for years. So um, they also use naltrexone um, in lower doses for um, pain reduction. It's, I mean, it's used 
for so many different things that have nothing to do with addiction. Um, so, but I'm, I, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but so it has a lot of benefits well outside of addiction, just to point out. But, um, so yeah, it, but what I would say is that if you're going to go the Vivitrol route, which is a once a month shot, make sure that you don't have underlying conditions that would send you to the emergency room. I have to take the pill because I have underlying conditions such as seizures, etc., that might send me to the emergency room. So anyways, okay, next one. And this one is huge. Um, in the rooms.com. Okay. So I went to AA, um, initially, but I had some issues with it. Um, one being, I'm not powerless and I'm not going to say it. Um, two being, I somewhat found it and I don't want to, I'm not slamming AA. I think that there are, I found a lot of benefits from AA. The community in general was amazing. However, there are portions of the community that are also predatory. Reason being, there are people that are required to be there that don't want to be there. But they're required. So there's there's just a lot of predatory behavior and I happen to be someone who absorbs energy and I would feel that when I would go to the meetings and it was extremely uncomfortable. I I just didn't like it. So anyways, but there's a number of issues that I just had in going to the meetings that just made it extremely uncomfortable for me, but I'm not going to go into all of that. In the rooms.com, there are tons of meetings all day long. You can choose from them. There's, um, in fact, let me, okay, there's, uh, there is AA, there's NA, there's ACA, which is Adult Children of Alcoholics. Um, there's trauma healing, dual diagnosis, gambling, overeating, chronic pain, crystal meth, agnostic AA, um, Na Native American addiction, LGBT addiction, nurses who are addicts, um, sex addicts, mental health, codependency, yoga, meditation, chanting, um, breath work. There's just there's so much available and there are people from all over, I think it's Europe and uh, North America from what I've seen. So it's just really cool. You can see a lot of different people and they're all hours of the day, weekends too. I've just found a lot of benefit and you can do like a $1 donation for a meeting or if you don't have a dollar that day, say you're just starting out and you literally have nothing, you don't have to donate. So. But, um, but yeah, you can just do, or you can do um, a $5 donate. Anyways, there's a little donate button on it. So I found in the rooms just amazing, absolutely amazing. So that's another one. Um, breath work, on to the next subject, breath work. Oh my gosh, I'm already 48 minutes. Ah. Okay, breath work. <sighs> breath work is amazing because it centers you back into your body. It's amazing. Okay, through the nose. And I'm gonna put a link below. There is a reason why you need to be breathing through your nose. There's a million different reasons, but those are a million different videos on their own. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you, do it. Breathe through your nose, close your mouth, period. Okay, there is um, diaphragmatic breathing, there's box breathing, there's four, seven, eight. Um, purse lip breathing, it's where you breathe through your nose and then you uh, breathe out through your lips. Um, there's alternate nostril breathing. Um, there are many uh, breath work practices, uh, five main ones that I know of. Um, it reduces um, stress and anxiety, I'm telling you. Um, calms anger, alleviates pain uh, because it can center you in your body. Um, it helps reduce ruminating thoughts it can improve mood. Um, but again, I'm going to do multiple videos on 
breathwork because it's a whole entity in itself. But just for now, try to breathe through your nose and expand your belly. Try to get into that habit as much as possible. That's simple. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. States. When I, this was when I first understood states, when it was first explained to me, I was doing outpatient rehab years ago. I was like, oh my gosh, now I understand why I felt so bizarre when I would sober up. I'm like, I don't feel normal. I don't feel like me. Like I need a drink just to feel normal. And this, when they explained states, then I got it. Okay. Um, it's understanding the lack of comfort with specific functions, processes, or interactions. Um, it's simply the neural pathways were built under this altered state. So if you're drinking or have opioids in your body, meth, whatever. And then you go say, and learn to play a guitar in this state, right? But sober, you don't know how to do this, right? So these neural pathways are built in this altered state and you're learning to play guitar, but you're only learning to play guitar in this altered state. So when you go to sober up and this neural pathway isn't highlighted by that drug and you try to play the guitar, that neural pathway isn't activated by that drug, right? So you're like, you can't do it. See? So it's because that neural pathway isn't activated by that, by that drug. Now, it doesn't mean <laughs> that you have to completely relearn how to play the guitar, but it means you're going to have to build new neural pathways that you, you still know how to play the guitar, but you're gonna have to build new neural pathways in this new state and get comfortable in this new state. It's just gonna take time for that one to die off, new ones to build. Your brain is amazing and it can do this very quickly. You just need to give it the time and space to do it. It can do amazing things. Trust me, mine did it. <laughs> mine can do it after all the crazy horrible stuff I did to mine, yours can do it, trust me, because I drank enough for three lifetimes or more, trust me. I really messed my brain up and it came back, so anyone's can. Um, okay, so let me see, where was I? I just gotta check. Um, states, they chose a... Okay, so I think I kind of told you everything about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's enough about states. I think you kind of get it. Um, so I'm going to go on to binaural beats. Oh my gosh. Binaural beats are amazing. Okay. A lot of people think that binaural beats are the actual music that you're listening to, but they're not. Binaural beats are what's going on inside your brain. Um, they are the measured change in brain activity when presented with audio stimulus, uh, when presented with two, uh, with these two tones, uh, the brain, the brain's response is a binaural beat, which is hearing and responding to, uh, let me see this. It's hearing and responding to difference between tones. That's what it is. So it's responding between these two tones. And I believe it's like 10 to 11 Hertz. I think that's the difference in the two tones, I think. Um, but it's not the tones, the, it's not the tones themselves. It's not the music. It's what's going on in your brain. That is the binaural beat. Um, what's amazing about it is that if you do this, so I 
I have OCD, right? So I have a problem with ruminating thoughts. So I'm one of those people that it's very difficult to meditate because I have a hard time calming my brain. Binaural beats help you get into a meditative state, period. I'm gonna leave a link below that is just pure binaural beats. No music behind it, no nothing. If you wanna get into a meditative state, you have to have headphones on. It doesn't matter what they are, but you have to have headphones on. It doesn't work otherwise. Have to have headphones. Binaural beats, put them on, listen to them for about a minute, and then go try to go into your meditative uh, into a meditation and you can go in a lot quicker um, but what is good about these is not only can they help you with the meditative state um, but they can stimulate new brain cell formation and new neural pathways which is really good for addicts who have probably really damaged a lot of our brain cells right so um but it's good for what neurogenesis which is building new brain cells so um but what is it called uh brain wave entrainment synchronization is also what it's called okay so the next one is solfeggio frequencies now i have been listening to solfeggio frequencies for a long time like years and i swear by them i swear by them um if you want to know more about them, um, kind of based on the law of vibration. Oh, if you want to know a good book to read, book a volume. Law of bright vibration is one of the laws, but anyways, great book to read. Um, so each vibration has its own frequency, um, rhythm and balance. Um, the, let me see the, I think they were figured out. I know Dr. Joseph Paleo, he kind of figured out, I don't want to bring texts into this, but he used the Pythagorean reduction method um, way back when on a specific text, but I'm not going to bring all of that into it. But anyways, solfeggio frequencies. If you look them up on YouTube, you can do a combination of binaural beats and solfeggio frequencies, which is what I listen to at night. Um, and they have music that goes along with it. So it's great to listen to at night if you just have two little earbuds in your ear. So a combo of binaural beats, solfeggio um, with music. And it's great to listen to at night and it really helps you go to sleep. So anyways. I will do a whole nother long list of videos on just on self agile frequencies. Okay. So next one. Oh my gosh, I'm almost at an hour. Okay. Neurotraining. Going to rush through this one. Um, <sighs> neurotraining is basically, uh, it boosts your brain power, ability, concentration by stimulating neurogenesis. What is it? What is it? It's doing things differently. You ever notice how you can, you can do things very simply, like you brush your teeth and you don't even hardly remember brushing it. Okay, well, try brushing your teeth with your left hand. And it's like, oh my gosh, that feels weird. Okay, that is what neuro training is like, doing things differently. So I started doing things like that years ago because it makes your brain work harder. Um, if you always put your sock on your right foot first, try putting it on your left foot first. Do things differently that make your brain work. Try learning a new language. There's lots of apps that do um, neuro training on your phone, um, different mental exercises, etc. cetera, um, playing games, etc. cetera. Um, just any type of a cognitive therapy that gets your brain working. Games at home with your kids, etc. Like any kind of different thing that gets you thinking differently outside of the box. That's neuro training. I will go into that in a different segment, but doing things differently than normal, right? Okay, next one, therapy. Therapy, but you have to find a good therapist, right? But on top of therapy, um, there are things like EMDR, um, CBT, DBT, tapping, mirror talk. 
I'm almost an hour, so I can't go into all of these. I would love to. Um, oh my gosh. But um, you can do EMDR actually on YouTube if you know what you're looking for. Um, but it basically what it does is it helps get the two different hemispheres of your brain to work together. Really, you should work with a therapist because you have to talk through issues that you need to be working on to do it. Um, CBT um, and DBT, I'll put links for each of those individual ones. Um, those are basically reworking your way of thinking, um, but those are gonna be individual ones on their own. But what I would say for anyone who is an addict and coming out of it is you need to work with a therapist hands down you need to work with a therapist but that doesn't mean that you don't have to have an individual therapist because a lot of people don't have insurance they don't I mean so I get that but what I did initially I didn't have a therapist initially I was broke on the I mean I just I didn't have that but what I did have I had YouTube and I found therapists on YouTube okay I found the crappy childhood therapy I found um, I found um, D Diversala um, oh she was the one who taught me about um, narcissists oh, why can't I think of her name right now I'll put a link below but Diversala I can't think of her name oh my gosh she has such a beautiful name she's an Indian woman um, and um, so there's so many different therapists out there that can walk you through therapy that you don't have to pay for it's free on YouTube if you find if you find the right therapist um, so there is free therapy trust me you don't have to go to an office and pay for it so um, the other things that I would absolutely suggest before I finish this out I'm already in an hour oh my gosh okay no seed oils can't explain it right now. Stay away from nitrates, nitrites and nitrates. Just do it. Just gonna have to trust me on this one. Can't explain it now. Maltodextrin, maltodextrin, stay away from it because it spikes your insulin. And if you're gonna ch do the keto diet, you're gonna go to all this effort and spiking your insulin is just gonna work against you. Maltodextrin is hidden in a lot of packaged foods. If you are doing sweetener packets that say sugar-free, so anything that says sugar-free, um, Splenda, Stevia, I don't care what it is. If it's in a little sugar packet, it's got maltodextrin in it, period. Um, uh, uh, equal, like all, all of those, they all add maltodextrin and maltodextrin spikes your insulin. It doesn't matter that it says sugar-free. It spikes your insulin. Stay away from maltodextrin. That sugar-free jello that has no calories in it, maltodextrin, okay? So look at your labels, stay away from maltodextrin. Or don't, it's up to you. I do, works for me. So, so um, no on those. Low fructose, if you're if you were an alcoholic, if that was your issue, if you were on opioids or meth, it's not so much of an issue, but alcoholics need to be very careful with their liver. Okay. And fructose is only processed in the liver. So we're trying to go really light on the liver. So as alcoholics, stay away from fructose, um, light berries and stuff, not as big of a deal, but you know, heavy fructose fruits. No. And drinks with fruit like no just stay away from them okay um low on the AGEs that's advanced glycation end products uh, that's a whole nother video in itself but yeah google it or I'm going to leave a link below um plant toxins be very careful um lectins oxalates um plants don't like to be eaten so be, be careful how you cook them a million different videos I'm going to end up doing on those as well but um, I was a vegan and a vegetarian and I, I almost killed myself being a vegan and vegetarian. Like detoxing from oxalates 
Oh, the pain. Let me tell you, plants can kill you. They can kill you. So plants are very good for you, but know how to eat them, right? Understand if you're going to eat beans, you have to cook them a certain way, super high in lectins and other poisons too. If you're going to eat potatoes, know what those toxins are and know how to get rid of them. And if you're going to eat, um, you know, kale, understand what oxalates are and how to counteract them. There's lots of different uh, plant toxins and understand what um, sprouting is and, and how to change the nutritional content of your food so that it works for you instead of against you, okay? And then also histamines. What are histamines? How do you counteract them, right? Um, freezing versus refrigerating. When do you throw stuff out? So anyways, keep those low. So low on the plant toxins, low on the histamines, low on the AGEs, low on the fructose, okay? So anyways, I'm so sorry this video is so long. I thought, honestly, I can't believe it's so long. Oh, and also apple cider vinegar, you should be taking one to two tablespoons a day. I'm just going to throw that in there. But anyways, if you even found this video, I will be totally shocked because nobody knows about this channel. So, <laughs> and it'll probably get deleted and remade anyways. So anyways, this is my first little attempt at YouTube. So lots of fun. So anyways, um, oh, like, subscribe. Or don't leave comments too if you want to ciao